Hello and welcome to another Cliff Reviews Art House. This time I'm reviewing the film Here, directed by Baz Devos. This film was recommended by someone in the comments of a previous review, so I was happy to watch this film. It's definitely a non-conventional film. It's set in Brussels and it's about a relationship between a Romanian construction worker and a Chinese academic specialising in moss. She spends time looking at tiny plants under a microscope. It has really sparse dialogue. Everything that happens and everything that's said is really mundane. The film is totally minimalist. It does everything with such a restraint and an extensive use of silence. It's not afraid for the camera to linger on something mundane for quite a while. Many of the images seem random and trivial. I think this film only makes sense if you watch it as an experience rather than a film, like an artwork almost rather than a feature film. It's a sound and visual experience, but it is a film and I kind of like this experiment. I mentioned sound, I think in some ways it's arguable that the sound is actually the most important part of this film. As I say, it's very minimal, there's a lot of silence, so you do become aware of every small sound. The film opens with the contrast of rustling trees and bushes and construction noises in, in the distance. It's a really mundane and subtle start, but kind of instantly compelling. There's another scene in a room setting with plates on a table and there's the gentle chink of ceramics. I found myself becoming hyper aware of each sound. I watched this film on a TV, but I had really good headphones and I think this is really important. I don't think it would be the same just listening to this film through TV speakers. I often raise Chantal Ackerman's film, Jean Dielman. This is a film where sound becomes so important, where the trivial and mundane become interesting, not just because of the framing of the shot, but principally because of the repetitive sound and the effect that that has on the viewer's perception. I don't think the film here does this quite as well as Jean Dielman. I had the feeling that that film is being referenced, but that actually the film here is trying to create something different. Jean Dielman has a brutal underlying tension, and this isn't the case with here. In fact, I think that here is actually the opposite of that. It's a film of hope and finding meaning in a situation of existential questioning. The audiovisual experience is a really interesting one. It's not that it's especially compelling in itself. As I say, everything is so mundane and low-key in this film, but rather the film does manage to heighten the senses such that there's a kind of hyper-perception of what's going on. An example for me was where there was a shot on a country lane where a pigeon flies across the screen. I was hyper aware of its movement and the flapping sound of its wings. It was really delightful. There's an interesting phenomenon in one scene where they're very close to a train and we don't hear the train. There's plenty of other shots of trains in this film where we do hear the trains. I'm not really sure why he did this, but it did alert us to the fact that we might not be hearing the actual sound in the scene. I think this makes sense when I think about the theme of the, this film. Our main character is kind of living almost in a neutral state. Virtually everywhere he goes, there's hardly any people or any noise. And sometimes there's a distant noise of a building site. But clearly he always seems to be outside of this activity. It's like he's so alienated that he's cut off from the world. The film kind of just about makes it as being a romance, but it's so restrained. This couple don't know any personal details about each other. Their most intimate moment comes around looking at moss together. In thinking about the film afterwards, I would say that the star of this film is actually the greenery, the moss, the trees, the plants, and there is lots and lots of green. It's as if the film is capturing the fact that all of life is in the moss. I really like this. I think that this brings us to the theme of the film. 
It's about seeing the complexity of the world in the mundane. Moss is something that we don't even notice. Perhaps it's even considered as a pest. Yet the moss is presented here, in here, as a beautiful, living, important part of a system. To this extent, the concept is that the film is so much bigger than the actors and the script. It's almost focusing on things other than that. The theatrical parts of the film are relegated to the background. I like this film overall. It feels really creative and original, trying to do something new. I mentioned the similarity in terms of this sound sensitivity phenomenon to Jean Dielman. That film is compelling in a way this isn't. This is so minimal, deliberately I think, and it isn't always engaging. You do have to be in a particular frame of mind to see it, not expecting to be entertained in conventional ways. It is a profound audio-visual experience, I think, in the moment, and I guess this is where the title comes from, the here and now. And it's one of those films that starts to come together when you think about it afterwards. But the film does give us so little, I was left thinking that it doesn't quite fully work as a theatrical cinema film. But I like this as an experiment in non-conventional filmmaking. This definitely isn't a must-watch. But if you're interested in a film that doesn't use conventions and is extremely minimal, this is worth watching. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.